Hey everybody, let me flip this camera around. <clears throat> hey guys, um, so this is going to be a, a, a short one. Uh, I always say that and then it ends up being a uh, like a medium one. But, um, but I really just have two things I want to share with you. And, you know, sometimes like I really have all the intentions of doing like a proper tutorial, opening up my desktop, recording it. Uh, but in this particular case, I'm like, let me just, I think I can explain it to you and I don't need to do uh, a full on tutorial and you'll still, um, you'll still find this helpful, I think. Okay. So the first thing is for Facebook ads. Uh, notice if you're not already doing this, when you see an ad in your newsfeed, click up in the top right hand corner and scroll down to why am I seeing this? And what it will tell you is what, how that person targeted you. So it's so interesting. I just saw I just saw an ad in my newsfeed for Salesforce. Hi, Steph. This is actually great for you as well. Um, so, for example, Stephanie is a clinical nutritionist. So the ads that she sees in her feed, or she can she can specifically start looking for ads that are her competitors. Hey, Jennifer, did I am I on my business page or am I on my personal page? I hope I'm on my business page. Uh, but anyway, so you will. Um, Look at any of your competitors, peers, influencers, and then click on that top right-hand corner and say, "How? Uh, why am I seeing this? And it will show you exactly what they targeted. So for the Salesforce ad, I thought it was very interesting. They targeted women between, it was, no, it was people between 25 and 55, kind of a, a wide net they were casting. And then, thanks, Jen. And then, um, and then... People who had put Bachelor of a BA degree in their Facebook profile. Okay, I've never targeted for people who have listed that they have a bachelor's degree in their profile. And by the way, I didn't even know that I did list that in my profile, so I'm going to go and check that out. So very interesting, and I've been doing this, and then I'll take a screenshot of it, which leads me to my next little nugget I want to share with you, and it it revolves around Evernote, okay? So if you're not, if you're currently using Evernote, you know, a lot of times with these tools, I find that we, and I'm guilty of this as well, uh, not guilty of, I guess it's just goes with the territory of, you know, messing around with digital tools. You don't have time to use every feature of every product that you use. So we don't take advantage of everything they have to offer. With Evernote, I still have only tapped the service and I use it a ton, but, um, but I want to share this with you. This is how Evernote works best. And that is, you know, in Evernote, you could create all these notebooks and the notebooks are great, but the notebooks are really almost irrelevant. What's important in Evernote are the tags. So whenever you, you do anything, okay, so let's say you uh, take a screenshot of a receipt and so then you're going to tag it with maybe uh, receipt, maybe you put the tag taxes 2016, um, maybe you put uh, gas, gas tax, add a bunch of different tags. Make sure that those tags are lowercase. And the reason is because whenever you need to get information around that topic, you're going to go into your Evernote and you're not going to even worry about what notebook you put it in. You're just going to type in the search bar um, receipts or tax or tax 2016 or gas or whatever. And the reason I recommend using multiple tags is because just like we often cannot remember what notebook we put something in, with the exception of my friend Jennifer Brady, who's watching, because she is the most insanely organized person I've ever met in my entire life, ever. And you will never meet anyone more organized than this woman. But she would remember what notebook she put it in. But most of us, like, you can't remember what notebook, and you might not be able to remember what tag. So... Um, so you want to make sure and give it multiple tags. At some point, certain things you'll always be using the same tag for and you'll remember. But the lowercase part is important because it's case sensitive. So, so either use all caps or use all lowercase, but just keep it consistent. And you will kiss yourself for doing this. And then you'll kiss me for telling you to do that. Um, 
Okay, and so this leads me to a third nugget and your last nugget um, that I recently got on the Middle Finger Project blog. I read this and I just thought it was great. So those of us who are in uh, sales to some degree with our online businesses, so if you have an online business, you are in sales uh, in some capacity because you you got to get the word out, right? Um, and we have to make these sales pages. Um, hey, Donna. And um, we have to make these sales pages, and we need to have copy, right? So, hey, Rose, thank you, and I appreciate that. Um, so we have to have these we have to have this copy, these words that we have to put on our sales pages. And, you know, we hear from all the experts that those words need to, we need to, we need to find what our customers are saying and basically use that language in our sales page, right? It's not that easy to do. Well, the, the Middle Finger Project, which is a great blog, I highly recommend it. Um, what she does is she created a notebook in Evernote called Humans. And then she had three then she made three tags or three sub notebooks um, that were like in business, thinking about going in business and something else. That that wouldn't really apply to me, but that's how she segmented her humans. And then she uses Evernote Web Clipper, which if you're using Evernote, you must use the Evernote Web Clipper. It is the single greatest invention in human history, okay? So, and I'm not even exaggerating. It's a Chrome plugin. It's a little elephant icon that will sit at the top of your screen. And whenever you, whether, whether it's an email or something on your, on your page, or if it's a, um, or if it's a, a whole website, you can clip, you can do a screenshot and mark it up. You can do it, what they call a simplified article, and it's gorgeous. So it's like, if you're reading an article, like in Social Media Examiner or some other website, it gets rid of all the junk in the right and left hand column and just leaves you this beautiful article. If someone sends you an email and you want to save it as a great example, you can just do a screenshot of it with your Ever Evernote web clipper. It takes two seconds. You give it a tag, right? And then you put it in the appropriate notebook. Um, and in the humans example, what she does is whether it's social media or in an email or whatever, when her people give her feedback um, or love or 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 they're or they're struggling or they have a question, all of it gets clipped and st and tagged and stuck into the appropriate folder. So now, when she goes to do a sales page that is for people in startup phase, for example, and she wants to or she wants to send a, a marketing email to people who are just starting their business, right? It would be very different from the email she might send for the people who are very established in business. So now she's got them all segmented and tagged, and it makes her job so much easier. And finally, because there's one more thing I thought about that, I, that is so helpful to me, and you might find it helpful as well. Um, I have one big notebook in Evernote that's called Swipe. And then anything that somebody else does that I think is great or exemplary, um, or has impressed me in some way that I want to refer back to, then I clip it with the Evernote Web Clipper and I save it to my swipe file and then I give it a, a more specific tag. So let's suppose uh, someone sends a really great marketing email um, or a welcome, like an onboarding email, then I will, I will uh, clip it with Evernote Web Clipper and then I'll tag it with onboarding email. Um, does it work with iPhone browser? No. I mean, Evernote Clipper does not work in iPhone browser, but what does work is just do a screenshot with your phone. I do this all the time. Just do a screenshot with your phone and then go to Evernote and you can add it that way as a picture and you can tag it um, because, yeah, I'd use that all the time. The other thing in your phone with regard to Evernote is... Uh, a one, you could do this with, with Evernote natively, but it's not as good, I don't think, as with this little app. It's called Scannable, and it's it's a blue square with like a butterfly, butterfly on it, and I think it is owned by Evernote. And what is so incredible about this particular app, and I use this all the time, is that if you have a document, uh, a check, um, you know, something important, a legal document, your kid's medical records or shot records or whatever, you um, I usually, I like to put it on a dark background, like my dining room table, and you put your phone, and instead of, you could always just take a picture with your phone, but this scannable thing picks up 
picks it up in a different way. And then you can read every word on the sheet and it for like, even if it's a legal document, it will, you know, that, that legal size, it will format it correctly and make it like printable as opposed to a, just a photo that you take. I don't know how it does it, right? But it, it recognizes the edges of the, of the page. Then you tag it and you put it in a folder. So if Jen, if my friend Jen Brady is watching, she will appreciate this. And I think I, I think I talked about this on a, on a, a broadcast recently, but it's worth repeating. Um, for, for those of you with kids, I have, um, I have a, a notebook called kids and then I have a notebook for each of my three children. And then for each of those notebooks, I have every grade plus camp. Okay, so one camp folder, then kindergarten through 12th grade. And I have gone back in, in an effort to be pa uh, paperless. I have gone back and used this app, Scannable, to, you know, uh, their drawings, pictures, certificates, all that stuff. And I've scanned it all. And of course, I didn't do this all at one time, but um, it wasn't, it, it really wasn't as bad as you would think it would be because I did already have it organized in physical like file folders. So then I scanned them and then I tagged them like Jake. And then I put another tag like kindergarten, um, art, again, multiple tags. And then, but put them in, you know, Jake first grade, Jake second grade and so forth. That has been so great. Um, tiny scanner. So I guess there's a bunch of scanners. Uh, um, Stephanie says she's got one similar. Yep. Great. So everybody's using a scanner, so that's great. But the important thing is to tag them um, if you're using Evernote to give them tags. So just a couple of little things for you guys today. We, we talked about a cool way to get some fresh ideas for your Facebook targeting by looking at your peers and clicking on the right-hand corner of your screen uh, when you see an ad and say, why am I seeing this? And it'll tell you why they targeted you. Super um, informative and interesting, I'll say. And then, um, and then we talked about some Evernote uh, pro tips. So I hope you found this helpful. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Those of you who are in my Facebook group, The Front Row, remember that today is Streaming Sunday, and you are invited to come in and talk for up to four minutes about really anything you want to talk about, as long as it's not business and it's not promotional. Um, it, the topic of today, today's topic is... Uh, who is your most, who's the most influential person in your life and why? That's a little heavy for you. You don't have to talk about that. You can talk about whatever you want. The idea is actually to practice your live streaming skills and get comfortable with it in an environment that is safe um, and, and where you don't have, in kind of non-threatening. Uh, so go on over to the front row and think about something you could talk about. You talk about what we have for breakfast this morning. You could talk about your favorite your favorite vegetable. It doesn't matter. Just go and share something. Uh, you know what I personally love selfishly is when people show me their environment. Like I love to see the way people live. I think that's why I like garbagey reality TV. It's not because I, well, it's because it's for all the wrong reasons that I like reality TV, but, um, but mostly, I am very curious. Like, I love it when they show, like, their kitchens, what's in their refrigerator. You know what I mean? I just love to see how people live. So, um, selfishly, if you want to do one of those kind of scopes, it would be very um, interesting to me. Okay, not scopes, uh, live streams. Have a great day. Bye.